Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I know somebody needed to hear that <clears throat> this morning. That was You Know My Name by Mervyn Mayo. God, you comfort me. You know my name. Somebody needed to hear that this morning. I know I did. And I think I don't know about everybody else. And I can't speak for everybody else. What I can speak to is that I know at times I need the feeling that I get from the faith that I claim. Because that feeling allows me to get through some real difficult moments or just feelings. It also encourages me. Now, I know you'll hear some people go back and forth and they'll want to fight you and argue about the Bible and all that. I don't have time for it. What I can tell you is that I know is that in some real <clears throat> difficult moments, my faith and the belief that I have has helped me get through. And I've watched things happen that even to this day, I don't know how and why they happen, but I know they happen even in some of my worst moments. The ability to know that the Lord knows my name. And you may go, well, Keith, how do you know he knows your name? Because I look at the things that was done for me, that affected me, and made things better for me. When somebody knows who you are, they know what you need. And when somebody knows what you need, they're able to help you with your pain. So I say that this morning to anybody watching is that part of the reason why I do what I do is because I know somebody out there feels as if they have no one, 
feels as if there's no one that's going to listen, no one that understands, no one who cares. I understand that. That's why I do what I do. And so again, I want to say good morning to you. I am Keith K.L. Belvin, crisis specialist, author, and educator. I am somebody who has dedicated his life to try to, the best that I can with the talents that God has given me, help as many people as possible. Okay. And so with that said, thank you for tuning in. I want to, I want to go over a couple of quick things real quick. All right. First and foremost, you know, I talk about this every day that I'm on. Shout out to Ethel and Annie Mae's Soul Food, 497 Albany Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn. Owner and operator, Chef Danielle Moore. Let me tell you something. I am going to support my sister as long as she keeps those doors open. I'm going to do what I can to help her keep those doors open because she loves what she does. And it comes through in the food. It comes through in her demeanor. It comes through in every way possible. And you know what? I've supported enough who didn't care about me. I'm definitely going to try to support those that love me. And I know that Danielle loves me because she has been there for me over the last 10, 11 years. So when she opened up the doors to her place, I said to her, as soon as I come back home, I got you. And yes, when I came back home in August, the first stop that we made was there. And the reason why is because I don't just talk it, I live it. My goal is to try to help others, feed others, make others successful. Some people think I'm successful, I'm not. I'm okay. But I success to me is when I can help others eat and eat on their own, not eat because of me, eat because of what they do. So shout out to Chef Danielle. And she is on Uber Eats, Grubhub. But here's the beautiful thing. Now, listen to me. If you if you are outside of the New York City area and you want to support Chef Danielle, well, just stop by Ethel and Annie Mays Soul Food Kitchen website. And it's at the same name, Ethel and Annie Mays. She vacuum seals meals and sends them out around the country. Now it's select meals. You know, some things don't keep, but she has a, a plethora of things and items that she can send out and pastry. Because again, I had she has cakes in a jar. Now this is fantastic. I had carrot cake, which I had not had in years since I left New York. Carrot cake and red velvet cake in small, very nice reusable jars, by the way. Great for planting if you have some children or just for storage. And they were, they were great. And she mails them out as well as the other dishes. And so, listen, I am definitely going to be rocking with it. And she just, if you go by her page, she was frying turkeys, which I've never had. She keeps telling me it's real good. So I'm going to have to take her up on her offer and try to fry turkey. If you've had fried turkey, put it in the chat. Have you had fried turkey? Is it good? No good? Give me your thoughts. What's your thoughts on fried turkey? I've never had fried turkey. I've, I've had fried chicken. I've never had fried turkey. But I'm not a big turkey, like, whole turkey fan but i do like turkey breast i don't really like turkey wings i don't like turkey legs i just eat white meat now you're like really yeah i do i i don't i just eat white meat um and so that's the probably only part of turkey i really like but i'm hearing fried turkey is pretty good so leave your thoughts in the chat you know where's my southern folks because y'all always down there throwing something in some grease <laughs> i'm sorry oil <laughs> So if you've had fried turkey, let me know if that's really the move or not. I don't know. All right. So let me move on to the next thing. Now, guys, 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 listen. And you saw the picture in my um, in my what's name? Soul of a Man is dropping this month in about three weeks, three weeks, three weeks. If you want to pre-order, if you want to pre-order this book, go to bit.ly backslash T-H-E, capital T, H-E. Soul, capital S, O U L, of a man, capital M, three. The soul of a man, three. bit.ly backslash soul, the soul of a man, three. The T, the S, and the M are all capital. Get on the waiting list, pre order the book. You will be one of the first to get this outstanding book. Soul of a man, three. I can't breathe. If you look at the picture, those are the 13 men of color who have returned to be able to give you insight to just how we see the world. 
fictional and non-fictional stories. So some are real, some are fantasy, but I'm telling you, it speaks to what is going on in the world right now. I can't breathe. First book won an award in 2009. We came back six years later. We were runner up to the same award, but Silverman won, Silverman 2. Silverman 2 is I, makes me want to holler. And now here we are with the soul of a man three, I can't breathe. And I am proud and honored to be a part of this book. All right, now moving on. My book from Jiggle to Jesus, I got some news. My book is gonna be changing. It's still gonna be called From Jiggle to Jesus. But instead of rewriting, instead of doing a second edition, I am going to be talking about the steps walking you through the steps so the cover is going to change i'm going back to the cover designer the steps necessary for making personal and spiritual transformation because i thought about it and you guys many of you oh i think 10 or 15,000 i think books i've sold 10 or 15,000 books that i've sold um I think more than that, tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure. It might even be like 20,000. Um, I'm like, okay. And um, and so with that said, I decided, I, I wrote about me. I now want to help you even more. I want to, um, um, hold on one second. Call you right back. Okay, there we go. I want to be able to help others and walk you through what that looked like for me. So many of you have read the original book. So what I decided to do is this time I'm going to take, I think 10, maybe 15, I'm not sure. You tell me what you think, 10, 15, or 20. Should I give you 10 tips, 15 tips, or 20 tips? Because I really want to get into what it takes to make personal and spiritual transformation. It was not easy. It was a lot that I had to come to terms with within myself to be able to be who I am right now to be able to help those. So that's what's coming in 2022 over the next 60 days. That's what I'll be working on as well. So again, I want you to know that and understand that. So again, and of course, if you are a church leader or church goer and you don't have a mental health ministry in your church, why don't you? How don't you have a mental, an outreach of mental health ministry in your church? Hit me up because that's what I do. I create mental health ministries where I partner with churches to supply the mental health needs. I actually have a few people that work with me. I have a team. So this way, the men, it's not just for men and women because I work mostly with women. But if the women want to speak to a woman or whatever, have that in place where you bring an outside entity in myself and the people I work with to be able to offer assistance to those in your church who need help. And that's one of the things that we do. That's one of the things that we offer. And so it's called BCAP, Ravens Church Assistance Program, where we sit down and work out. We give you a discount on what we offer our counseling services for. Your member pays a, a small portion of what they can afford, and the church picks up the rest. And this way, we help with the renewing of the mind, which the Bible said we are supposed to do if we're going to get closer to God. All right. So how do we do that renewing of the mind? We assist the brothers and sisters who need that help. And I help set that up with the churches. So again, huh, those are the morning announcements. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to them. Now let's get into today's uh, topic of conversation, right? Now, if you look, I wrote no when you're being used. It comes in a friendly looking package. Now you see I wrote N-O instead of K-N-O-W. I wrote it that way for a reason. No. Often, the reason why people use us is because we don't say no. But what I want you to understand is just a play on words because um, the idea is um, we need to actually, we need to actually understand when somebody is using us. Now, I am telling you as a person who live their life manipulating others for a long time. Being able to move them in position to give me what I wanted without having to give anything back. And now, because I, like I said, I work mostly with women. I do work with some men, but I work mostly with women because 
My biggest thing is, do you understand when you're being used? Do you understand when somebody at work is asking you to do something that they should be doing? Do you understand when you're in a relationship and a person is absorbing all of you and giving nothing back? Could happen in church, could happen anywhere, could happen in your friendships, where you have friends that seem to always ask you for things, but they ain't really trying to give up nothing. And we know it happens in business. If any of that makes any sense to you, put a one in the chat. If you have seen it, experienced it, or if you really want to be truthful with me, if you've been the user, put a one in the chat if you understand what I'm talking about. Put a one in the chat if you understand what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about being used and the many forms that that comes in. Come on, put a one in the chat. I want to know who's rocking with me this morning. Okay. And also remember to like this and share this, but put a one in the chat so we know what's going on. Okay. It's very important. Thank you, Robin. Appreciate you. And I'm going to tell you, it's super important. Now, I'm going to tell you, you guys have known, I did not write a book called From Gigolo to Jesus for no reason. I was a whore, a misogynistic whore. So to be a misogynist, a person who's really out here disliking women and then pleasure myself with those same women, that's, that's a very evil mindset. And it comes from being spoiled, comes from being arrogant, and it comes from wanting what I want and having no boundaries. But you just can't walk up on somebody and say, I want to use you until there's nothing left and then cast you aside. I want to treat you badly sexually and then cast you aside. I want you to do the business for me so I can reap the benefits of it and give you nothing. You can't walk up and say that. So that's why I wrote, it's going to come in a friendly package. They're going to come with a smile. They're going to come in a loving manner. They're going to make you believe that it is all about you. They're going to be a strong supporter. They're going to actually maybe even share some of your stuff and tell other people how good you are until they get what they want. And then like an old pair of shoes, you are chucked to the side. And I hope this is resonating with someone. And I'm telling you because not only was I that man, I was good at it. Very good at it. So I'm going to let you in on some tips. So I will buckle up. I'm going to walk you through some things for a couple of minutes, especially the ladies. Please pay attention. <laughs> I understand, Robin. Listen, I, I wish I had been this many years ago and I can see some of the responses. Um, so if some of you respond and I want to I want to address that real quick because somebody had posted like, Yo, why is he ignoring me? Let me say this. I am on seven. I'm sorry, eight different platforms while I'm doing this right now. I can only see one on my other computer and that's my Facebook page. So if you're responding and I don't respond, but you hear me respond to somebody else, it is because I'm responding to what I can see. Please don't take it as an offense. I go back and respond to every message. I don't want anybody to think I'm disrespecting them. I don't want anybody not coming back because like he's ignoring me. I'm not. All right. Please understand that I am not doing it personally, but Yes, Robin, I wish I had was differently years ago, but God got me right here where he needed me and I'm gonna go from there. So let me explain something to you. And this is why I say it comes in a friendly package. Let's take relationships, right? You can't walk up on somebody and say, I just wanna use you for sex. Now you can talk about wanting to have a physical relationship with them. Even that is tricky because the woman may go, nope, I'm not about that. I ain't trying to just jump in bed with nobody. I'm trying to have a real relationship. Okay, so the person who wants what they want knows this, so they got to take on the appearance of what you say you want because they know what they want. Again, that's why I said it comes in friendly looking packages. All right, so I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to pay attention to the packaging. Now, I wasn't just an ordinary whore. I was a good whore, and that means that I was a great white shark in a pool of regular sharks because what made it worse for me was I was going to connect not just what you thought, I was going to connect your heart to it. So that made me the worst type of dude. A friend of mine years ago called me Satan, and I used to laugh about it. Now that I'm old and I'm like, oh my God, that's how he perceived me because I was doing the devil's work and I was very good at it and didn't realize how bad that statement was until I came back to the Lord that, you know, I actually had a friend calling me Satan and was enjoying the ride out with me. 
but okay. So when a person runs up on you, they're not going to say, oh, I just want to get into your pants. So they have to make you feel a certain way. They have to make you comfortable that everything that you're giving, everything that you're getting is what you say you want when actually it's all lies. That is why many will go, why didn't they just tell me the truth? Why did they take me through all this? Why did they do me like this? And if this sounds familiar, put a two in the chat. Male or female, if you've ever uttered those words, why did they do me like this? Why didn't they just tell me the truth? Why did they have to treat me like this? Put it to in the chat. And the answer to that is because it was never about you. It was never about you. See, that's the thing that the liar, the person that's using you, knew from the start. You were just the vehicle to be driven. You were just the target. You were the mark. And so they're going to use you. And, and, and the question why, Robin, is because they were selfish, they were spoiled, and they were evil. They wanted what they wanted. And anybody watching, especially the ladies, right? And I'm not leaving the men out on this. It was never about you. It was never about you. That person was going to use anybody who accepted the position. Yes, it is sad and hurtful. But remember, hurt people hurt people. And evil people hurt people. And it was never meant to be good, Robin. See, I never meant half the things I said to the women that I was with. I've been with over 400 women. I don't say it for, I don't say it for accolades. I say it because, yeah, I was nasty. And I didn't care about half of the women. I didn't. And yeah, don't take me saying it easy as if I'm flippant or being disrespectful. I am telling you the truth. Out of all those women, I maybe loved six, seven, maybe. I didn't care about most. And the reason why I didn't care is because most of them didn't make me care. They didn't concern themselves with where this was going. They were happy in the moment. And I could create the moment. I can make the moment appear to be what you think it is because I can make these moments be this way for the multiple women that I was with. It's what players do. See, because once you can remove the care about somebody's feelings from the picture, you're capable of everything. So know when you're being used. And you see it in business too. I'm gonna come back to the relationship stuff in a second. You see it in business too. You will have people who will get right up under you right next to you and they want to absorb everything that you know but give nothing back and once they've had enough they're going about their way did you ever promise to marry any of them no rob no no never i never had plans on marriage i i listen i messed up my first marriage because i should have never got married i only got married because i didn't want to be the dad who had children in one place and another and wound up being that dad anyway so no, but I know some men that take it and some women that take it that far because they have to keep the illusion because it all depends on how much they're getting from you. Now, Robin asked the question, did I ever promise to marry any of the women that I was with? No, mm -mm. never even discussed marriage. When they would bring it up, I'd be like, please, I ain't getting married. I would literally, and that's another thing too, to, con to keep a person locked in on using them, you have to dismiss when they attempt to bring up something that's going to take them out of your sphere of influence. So I want to stay on this for a second. When somebody brings up like, hey, you know, have you ever thought about marriage? Oh, please, Matt, you, you actually, you got to make it sound stupid and make the person sound stupid for bringing it up. So you know what they do? They don't bring it up anymore. Robin said, I commend you for that. I, I, I was promised the marriage, the happily ever after. The whole, oh yeah, Robin, I've sat with dudes. Listen. I never let it get to that point. And actually, if she started pressing about marriage, I broke up with her and made her feel that the reason why we broke up is because I felt I was being pressured. Now, in the back of her mind, she might want that, but she won't bring it to the table. Now, if we make up and she allows me to come back to have sex, now, in her mind, I won't bring that up again. And when you come back, now, this is where men use sex, people use sex as a weapon. When you let the person come back, quote unquote, makeup sex, 
if the person is smart like I was, they will use that, make the sexual encounter more thunderous than it normally is as a way to say, see, this is why we should be together. Don't mess up again. Now the trick is to use their body along with the mental misogyny that you're doing. So now you've already got them not to bring up something and their body is saying, and look what he gave us and look what she gave us. So if we just stay quiet, we can keep having this type of fun. Yes, because you shouldn't have brought that up to begin with. Trust me, it's a very sick disposition because when you set out to use somebody, you've already have a sick disposition. It's the truth. That's why I do what I do. It's why I counsel now. It's why I'm open in a transparent book. I have no fear of my past and I've apologized to everyone. And that's another thing too, as you grow, and I'll get to the second part of that is how you overcome that. But I just want you to pay attention to what it looks like. Most people who are going to use you are going to show up friendly. They're going to show up cordial. They're going to show up as if they're your main supporter. Mm -hmm. This is how it normally happens. They will compliment you. They will even least, they will even seem like they're overly impressed with you. But they won't support you. They won't try to help you grow. They won't invest in you time, money or effort. They won't tell the right people about you. They won't do that. They will tell some people about you, but when it benefits them, they will invite you places when it benefits them. Oh, you're welcome, Robin. I appreciate you being here and, and, and listening to me. And they will do all of that. They will include you in what they do to make you feel as if you're rocking out and you're doing some big things. But in the end, the checks never get past them. The knowledge never gets past them. The information stays with them. The accolades, the rewards stay with them. And when they think you're starting to catch on, they're going to chuck you a little bone. They're going to pay you a little bit of money. They're going to put you on to something where you get a little bit of the shine so you can smile, but you're not going to get the actual seat in the car. They'll let you in the car until they're done and then kick you out. And pay attention to this. They will talk to you on a regular basis. They'll even come and hang out with you where you are and maybe even let you come to where they are, but they won't take you anywhere. They won't include you in anything unless it's including you in something that is where they're shining. Hey, come see me get this award. Hey, come see me at my book signing. Hey, come see this at my whatever. And then when you're there to be like, yo, shout out to my girl, Robin. Shout out to my dude, Keith. Shout out to my girl, whoever. Crowd smiles at you, claps, da, 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 da. But at the end of the night, it's about them. But they used you. You were a prop. You were invited, so when everybody sees and you're going to smile and you're going to give the, the salute, you're going to thumbs up, all of that. No, Robin, we're just all connected. That's how great our God is. We're just all connected. This is why I try to give back, and this is why I try to say we're all connected. I'm just a wolf. I used to be the wolf. I'm just the shepherd who used to be the wolf. That's all. I'm now the shepherd. I try very hard. To, to protect the sheep that I used to destroy. So I understand, Robin. And that's the reason why I wrote from Gigolo to Jesus. Well, that was my life used to be. I am grateful. Like, yes, there you go. And that's why we have to share our testimonies. And that's what I do when I'm here. I'm transparent because I don't know who's watching this right now. Shout out to Robin for letting me know that this is touching her. I appreciate that. And anybody else, listen, anybody else that's watching this, if this is you, understand you're not alone. And I know there's some men and women watching going, Yo, why are you telling all that? Why are you telling your secrets? I ain't no secrets. There's users out there. Shepherds protect. Thank you, Renee. Yeah, I, listen, it's the truth. But also, shepherds are bold. Now, please understand this. Let me, let me hit you with this, too. Please pay attention. Y'all know the shepherd and the wolf is the same person, right? And when I say same person, same type of person, the only thing that's different is their mindset. Hear me out. Rock out with me for a second. The shepherd looks over at the wolf. Wolf looks over at the shepherd. They nod. 
they have to respect each other. Let me tell you why. If the shepherd falls asleep, wolf kills him, kills all the sheep. If the wolf falls asleep, shepherd kills him, all the sheep are safe. So when the shepherd moves, the wolf moves. When the wolf moves, the shepherd moves. They're in lockstep. And anytime you're in lockstep with anything, you come from, you become familiar with it. It becomes familiar with you. It is the yin and yang of things. So the wolf watches and waits for the catch the shepherd slipping. Shepherd watches the wolf, tries to catch the wolf slipping. They sleep at the same time. They eat at the same time. They move at the same time. So anytime any one of us wake up and say, I'm tired of being the wolf, the transition is not that difficult to become the shepherd. The question is, are you bold enough that when that wolf is slipping to kill it? See, most people can't do that. Most people can't crucify the thing inside them that caused them to be the wolf to begin with. Hold on to that for a second. Most people cannot crucify the thing that made them the wolf to begin with. Now, here's the crazy part. Not all of us were built to be wolves or shepherds. Many of us are the sheep. Many of us are sitting back and watching this play out and forced to deal with whatever the outcome is. Because not everybody can be a wolf and not everybody can be the shepherd. So please understand that. Some were built to be sheep and don't get offended by that because some don't have the guts to kill the other one. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I understand. I've been there. Because to go into somebody's home, tell them you love them. Make love to them when the whole time you don't care is evil. And when you can reproduce that in such a way that it becomes so smooth that it sounds like truth, that's pure evil. So when you now position yourself that way, you have also positioned yourself with the idea of killing somebody's spirit, killing somebody's dreams, hence the wolf. Now, when you make that transition like I have and you become the shepherd, well, then my job is to destroy every wolf that comes near me and those that I love and those that I don't even know. So am I prepared for those that would bring my past up? Mm -hmm. Am I prepared for those that would try to come at me now because of who I used to be? Mm -hmm. That's why I beat them to the punch and I put it out there first. That's why I wrote a book about it. That's why I'm on right now helping you. Because somebody watching this is either the victim of a wolf under the protection of a shepherd or the sheep and just kind of comfortable with everything that's going on. We good, right? Okay. Having no idea what's in play around them. And that's okay. Ignorance is bliss. When you don't know, you're good. Watch kids play and they have no idea the danger around them. They gonna play. It is as they get older and start to realize the danger that they go, wait a minute. <laughs> go watch kids at a park and then go look at their parents' face at a park. <laughs> It's two different looks. Kids are like, let's go. Parents are like, who is that? Who that just came to the park? Yo, who that chick? She wasn't here yesterday. Who that man? He ain't got no kid with him. <laughs> I've learned. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. And I'm just saying. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is when you're going to be used, it's going to come in a very polite package. I don't care if it's at work. I don't care if you're an entrepreneur. I don't care if you're out here dating. I don't care what the situation is. The person that is going to look to use you is going to show up with a smiley face and they're going to make you seem, they're going to make it seem like everything is okay. Now, you may say, but Keith, how do I defend myself against this? You're welcome, Robin. Actually, you made my day for what you shared with me, so I appreciate you. And I appreciate you too. Renee, now let me, let me explain this to you. You may say, how do I deal with that? One, ask questions. Question. Second, pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention if your relationships with people 
are one sided. You can always tell the user. The user is the one that is receiving more than they're offering. It's very simple. The whore gets more than they give. And they have positioned you to do their bidding. The user always asks you for information, but never gives anything. Now, also understand information, right? Hear me out on that. Details. Hey, where, where did you get those sneakers? Oh, uh, uh, store uptown. So there's only one store uptown? I asked you, where did you get the sneakers? But now check it. Keith, where did you get that jacket? Store of Town. Which one? North, South, East? Oh, no, the one on, on Jamaica Avenue. Okay, okay. We're out on Jamaica Avenue. See, they're getting information from you, but they ain't give you anything. So know when you're seeing that. Now, if you're bold enough, now, now, now be careful with this one. Be careful with this one. If you're bold enough, you can call them on it. But don't call a person on something that you're not ready to deal with. Don't do it. I can turn your question into something very devastating to you if you allow me. Store your information. Store what you see. And when you're ready, cut them completely off. Yeah, I said it. Kill it. Kill the wolf. Now, don't kill a person physically. Don't be out here killing people. I ain't advocating murder. <laughs> you got to be clear today on social media. I ain't advocating murder. I'm advocating killing the relationship. This is a one-sided relationship. I'm done. Because you don't want anything from me but what you want for you. I'm not gaining from that. I'm good. Take care. Now, I'm going to speak to my ladies. Do not allow physical pleasure. Hear me. Do not allow physical pleasure to convince you of something that does not feel right. Now, yes, men included, but more so ladies because of estrogen and because of our designs. Men have testosterone. We're naturally designed to go out here and do things. Remember, we used to kill things, come home and then be a family person. We have that switch still inside us, even though we're not hunting and killing anything. Ladies, you have estrogen. You have a predisposition to certain emotional things. That doesn't mean that you're all emotional creatures. It's just a predisposition. And we're not going to argue the whole what you are, what you identify as. That's another lie for another day. I'm just giving you my point of view. You do not have to agree with it. But do not allow physical pleasure to override what you know does not feel right spiritually and does not feel right emotionally. See, people can say what they want about the Bible. The devil, God says crucify the flesh because he knew that the flesh was weak. Tantalize the flesh, you tantalize the spirit. And if, if you give in, if you give in to the flesh, your spirit will not be able to pull you back from that. Because the spirit doesn't speak that loud. God doesn't speak that loud. We would go deaf if he spoke that loud. So the flesh knows that. And you may go, what are you talking about? Well, I'm going to help you out. Think about it. Now let's be, let's have some conversation here. When you were digging something and then you really want it, he looking good, she looking good, they looking good, inside you go, I should go home. He or she is a player. This, this ain't right. We shouldn't be doing this. I, I could lose my job. I got to go pick my kids up for the babysitter. Where'd your clothes go? Why are you horizontal? See? Inside you, your spirit said, take your butt home. Go check on your kids. Your husband, your wife is coming home soon. The flesh said, can you get it done in five minutes? 
the user said, we can get it done in three. And that three turned into 12 minutes because he going to give you or she going to give you all they got. Because here's the crazy part. Now, this is what's going to sound crazy to you, but I'm, I'm just I'm just sharing with you. They want to see you get in trouble. They want to see you lose. Because then who you're going to turn to when you're in an emotionally bad state? Right back to the same wolf who put you there. See how evil work? The same person who put you in a position because of physical want puts you in an emotional and spiritual trap so you will call out to the very person who placed you in that trap. What are we going to do? My husband's going to find out about this. No, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. Now, that person gets to be your savior. They help fix it for you. They tell you what to say. And if it works, you now are beholden to them. And they're going to make you pay for it. Yeah, that's how it works. That's how evil looks. And I don't know who needs to hear it this morning. I don't. I don't know who's sitting there right now and thinking about it. I see you, Tiffany. You're right. Don't take the bait. But the bait looks so pleasurable. The bait feels so pleasurable. The bait comes off as something that works. And Lord, don't let your body react to the evil. See, the user's counting on that. The user has perfected what he or she does. But I'm going to speak about me. I perfected what I did. I had to. If I can give you reason to start doubting your husband, I own you. If I can make you believe that the relationship you are in won't work because you need to be in a relationship with me, knowing the whole time, I don't want you like that. I own you. And then here you make all these moves. I've used you for what I've had to use you for. And now, move on. I'm on to the next chick that I can do this to. And some women, I'm on to the next dude. And some women, I'm on to the next female. Whatever you choose, it does. I don't care how you identify. Evil is evil and good is good. Just know what it looks like. I don't care what you identify. I don't care if you identify. I don't care if you fluid. I don't care what you are. If you don't identify the user, you're going to be used. If you don't identify the wolf and you the sheep, it's over. If you don't identify the shepherd, you don't have safety. If you don't identify that you're a shepherd and that you need to be out here doing something, well, sheep runs amok. And this game is played every day in personal relationships, business relationships, and friendships. Mm -hmm. Every day. So which one are you? That's on you. Have you become the sh have you become the shepherd from your own pain? And I got you, Robert. Once be yes, once before. Yes, once upon a time, but not anymore. I got you. So Robin, you're gonna make a fantastic shepherd. Because you just have to let folks know. And that's another thing, too. And I'm going to say that for another day. I'm going to end this now. I'm going to get ready to get off this. We're going to talk about, are you, are you standing in those shepherd's shoes because of the pain that you've already faced? Because what you got to be careful, and I want to end it with this. What we have to be careful of when we have freed ourselves from the grip of a wolf is that we refuse to take on the mantle of shepherd. So we literally allow other people to be destroyed when we already know what's going to happen. We see it, and yet we don't say anything because we figure they got to learn like I learned. They got to figure it out like I had to figure it out. No, not if you're a child of God. Mm -mm. Doesn't work. Does not work. Thank you, Tiffy. I appreciate you, Tiffy. I thank you so much. Because now the goal is once you stop, once you've broken away, once you've loosened yourself from all that bondage, who are you helping? And with that said, I want to say this. 
if what I said today touches any part of what you are living, have lived and, and worried about, reach out. I got a few spots left, a few counseling spots left. My calendar is filling up. Yes, that's a good thing. But I'm here. Reach out. Let's talk. And the reason why I make myself available to talk is because I love being a shepherd. I get up in the morning and can't wait to be this shepherd. I go to bed at night and I'm thinking of ways to be better at being a shepherd. If I can kill enough wolves and I know I'm saving enough lives. And it's also my way of saying thank you to God and praying that I've done enough to offset what I did. I did a lot of bad for a lot of years. I owe. And yes, I don't know about anybody else. I get up every day knowing that I owe. It's what I took with me into the classroom. It's what I take into my counseling schedules now. It's what I take into every relationship that I'm dealing with. I try to make it mutual. Hell, I pour more value into people simply because I feel I know what that was to take it away from. So I give them extra and I make myself available. So if a sheep ever says, Keith, I need you, I'm there. If, and sometimes even when I'm not called upon and I see a wolf moving, I'll reach out and go, you know, that man was on some BS, right? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was BS. And when a cat run up on me, yo, did you tell? Yes, I did. What you want to do? Ain't no fear here. I've lived that. I trust what my God says to me. Do what you're going to do. But I don't know if you want that smoke. And I ain't no gangster anymore. Them days is over. But ain't no punks here either. I'm just saying. Don't let the cross around my neck fool you. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I do. So again, thank you so much. Listen, Soul of a Man. Pre-order it today. Book drops in about three weeks. Soul of a Man. Pre-order it today. bit.ly backslash the soul of a man three capitalize the D the S the M just like it is there in the picture. Be ready in 2022 from Jigolo to Jesus. 10 steps on personal and spiritual transformation. I did that to a friend. He was pissed when I told. Yes. Thank you, Tiffany. That's what I'm talking about. So I am redoing the book. The cover is going to change. I will show you when the new cover drops in, I believe, February or March. Might even be April of 2022. But either way, I will let you know what's going on. And right now, listen to me. If you dug what you heard from me today and you don't have somebody like me at your church heading up your mental health ministry and your church doesn't have a mental health ministry, make sure you reach out to me. Make sure you talk to me. Make sure you tell your church leaders, yo, you need to talk to this dude. I just saw a dude today that needs to be connected to our church. And the reason why is because like Mervyn Mayo says, you know my name. How you walk with me. How you talk with me? See, this is how the Lord knows your name. How you tell me? Come on, Marvin. I am your own. Those in the the faith know what he's singing about. Yes, Lord. I thank him every day because I didn't have to be here. I could have died a long time ago. And actually, for the most part, I should have died for my actions. So I don't overpass, I don't overlook that. A lot of people did less and was no longer here. So I cherish every day that I wake up because God could have taken me out at any time. And he still may. So I still got to rock out like every day is the last day. Yes. And to any of my wolves out there, I know that life is empty. I know it is. And I know you get to a point that you can't trust because you have no reason to trust because of what you did. I got that too. Talk to me. And I'll show you how to realign yourself to be able to trust people, even though you used to be the person that hurt people. Trust me. And you'll understand how you'll you'll be able to open up 
and allow yourself to be exactly who God created you. God knew you'd be right here being who you were. And to my non-believers, you may go, none of this touches me. Yes, it does. Because pain is pain. Just because I choose the faith to help me with mine, you still need help with yours. I'm here. You still got to talk to somebody. You still got to know how to let it go. And if nothing else, know how to use music to help you release those negative feelings. It's there. It's for you. You just have to know how to do it. So whether you believe in what I believe doesn't matter. What I know is that when you're pain free, it's a fantastic feeling. Come on, Mervin. So now we're missing so much when we can't talk to each other. Come on, Mervin. Just reach out. Just talk to me. I'm here. Go to the link in my bio, wherever you're watching this, and you'll see a link that says discovery call. Click it. Fill out the information. Let's talk. It's what I do daily. No fire will burn me. Come on. Come on, Mervyn. Come on, There it is. There it is. Come on. Come on now. Amen. Thank you, Tiffany. Yes. That's when you know you've gotten a good spot when you acknowledge that I'm no longer the person that I was before. You and Robin made my day today. Thank you to both of you. And Renee, too. I didn't forget you, Renee. Thank you. No giants can defeat me. Come on, Mervyn. Mm. Somebody needed this today. And for those of you that want to attack the church, this is what real church looks like. It was never about the building, guys. This is what the power of God looks like. Too often we talk without stopping and realizing it was never what a lot of you thought it was. This is what it looks like. When you can be in multiple places and have a similar effect, that's the power of God. And you can talk to people who have a mutual connection that may have never met you and still find peace. That is the God I serve. But we've allowed man to muddy up the waters. We attack the building, but not the problem. And we don't understand that we can all grow by helping each other, by being honest with each other. Mervyn, I appreciate you singing today. Listen, guys, I got to go. God bless. Reach out if you need me. It has been a pleasure to be in front of you. Take care. Have a wonderful day.